Hey guys, welcome to the True Blue Riffcast with your hosts, Jeremy and Dave. My name is Christine DeBell, but many of you know me as Susan from A Talking Cat. And as you know, I have to go and get my cheese puffs out of the oven. So have a great time with Jeremy and Dave. See you soon. Thanks, Christine. This is the True Blue Riffcast, the number one riff tracks podcast in the world. I am Jeremy, and as always, I am joined by... Huh? Oh, hi, it's me, Dave. Right, we're doing the podcast. Hi, it's me, Dave, here on the True Blue Riffcast. I what was are you totally, doing? I was totally paying attention to what to what you were saying and not looking at something else. What do you... Really? You, you, come on, we're doing the podcast, Dave. Focus up, pay attention. Right, no, oh, right. it, it's related, sort of. I'm on Rotten Tomatoes, right? And there's this okay. list of the worst horror movies of all time. And I, I just wanted to see if there was, I, like, like I'm prepared. Like, this is how I prepare for the show. I start looking for things to talk about just as the show starts. I will send you the link here. All right. Send me the link. I want to okay. see this. I'm gonna, okay. I got to open this other window. And here, I'm going to send you. I don't know if you can hear my. <laughs> there. All right. Yeah, there's my buzz. The worst horror movies of all time with yeah. a blind nun. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. So, all right, so. This ought it, to be fun. Yeah, let's just scroll through this. Oh, oh by the way, everybody, today we're going to be talking about uh, Matthew J. Elliott and Ian Potter uh, riff, Invasion of the B-Girls, and yep. the Bridget and Mary Jo riff, Earth Angel. But first, we're going to do this, apparently. <laughs> apparently okay so all right all right let's just start scrolling through here let's Mar- martyrs species two species two yeah i've heard of brahms hey, you know evil of- with uh with, with glenn jacobs yeah with kane yeah shutter captivity there better be some ri- th- 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 this better pay off oh when a stranger calls not when a stranger calls back no, that's the remake too from 2006. I didn't even know that that existed. <sighs> Darkness Falls. Friday the 13th. Jason hey, Chase it's Man. my favorite. It's my favorite Friday the 13th movie. I uh, this is a thing. Friday the 13th part 7 or 8. Part 8. Jason Takes Manhattan. Yeah. Uh most of it doesn't take place in Manhattan. Most of it takes place on a boat. I thought to he Manhattan. went to space. That was after this. Okay. <laughs> That was that's actually the first uh, Friday the Thirteenth movie that I ever saw. Oh, okay, and that's that's part of the reason why it's my my personal favorite. I've only I seen the early ones. I it. saw the one the one that didn't have uh, Jason in it, and it was so boring. <laughs> it's uh, like people like this. Uh, Slendy Man, Lost Souls. Hey, I saw Lost Souls in the theaters. Fantasy <laughs> Island. Dumb. Rings. Oh, the new Fantasy Island. That was her- hor- horrible. That was horrible. This Okay, look, this better pay off. This thing better have some riff tracks. Premonition, on here. American Werewolf in Paris. Yeah. I, I remember that. Forsaken. I still know what you did last summer. Wait, wait, what? What? Why is that on this list? I still know what you did last summer? Oh, I st- oh, 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 okay. I thought it was, I know what you did last summer. No, no, no. This is like the second one prom night but britney <laughs> the snow remake. britney snow is in pitch perfect and she's hot <laughs> that doesn't mean the movie's good dave okay, okay fine whatever and the Kendrick. devil inside dream house awaji what's awaji <laughs> welcome back from the edit everybody Bug. <laughs> flatliners they did the remake of flatliners yeah six souls Soul Survivors. Jeremy, this is not paying off. The Fog. <laughs> hey, hey, it's got... Uh, oh, okay. Okay, uh, there's there's definitely some, some movies that I that I totally do not own on DVD on this list. Oh, no. Like... I, I, look, I know about your DVD collection. <laughs> Return of the Living Dead Part 2, which is... It's like they took... They took the first Return of the Living Dead movie and made it... A, basically a kid's movie alone in the dark return of the living dead homecoming the disappointments room wow that's this list 
Cabin Fever. Jaws the Revenge. Jaws the Revenge. Wait, that's not a horror movie, you morons. <laughs> well, I mean, and... if the regular Jaws can be on a list of the best horror movies of all time. Yeah. One Missed Call, 2008. Okay. Is the um, worst movie. Yeah. Of, worst horror I've movie of all time, even, apparently. Never even heard of. Thanks for nothing, Rotten Tomatoes. You just wasted a bunch of time on our podcast. <laughs> Okay, guys, the gimmick was was that before we started recording, we were going through uh, another list on Rotten Tomatoes that had the best uh, horror movies of all time on there. And that list was hot trash. Yeah, it was terrible. But we did find some uh, Rift Tracks movies that are on there. We'll go ahead and share those here in just a second. But then we saw the worst movies, the worst horror movies. Like, oh, there's got to be some Rift Tracks movies on there. And it, and then we're like, okay, well, let's do a whole setup thing where Dave, you're you're lazy and you don't care about the podcast <laughs> and all this. And we did that, and you heard it. So that what is what happened there. But uh, these are all the ones from the other hot trash uh, list from Rotten Tomatoes. Drag Me to Hell, Poltergeist. Yeah, that was. Uh... Janet and Cole, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Janet and Cole. Uh, Carnival of Souls, Paranormal Activity, House on Haunted Hill, and The Lost Boys, also by uh, Janet and Cole. Yeah. Land well, Jaws is on here. I wouldn't recommend looking at, at, at these lists unless <laughs> you want to be severely disappointed. Uh, just, I, it's, it's just kind of like the way I expect you're disappointed now by that whole uh, bit that we did. Totally not paying off. <laughs> also, you know, there's there's the rule, don't read the comments. I looked at the comments and they started off fine. Like they all talked about how dumb the list was. And then I kept going and somehow it turned into a political argument. Oh, why does that surprise I, you? Why does it surprise you? <laughs> uh, I, I didn't say it surprised me. I just was just making a making a note. Okay. Well, uh, anyway, uh, what's going on in your life, Jeremy, <laughs> besides this list? Lots of snow. Oh, hey. Lots of snow. Apparently, that's going on for for, for, for everybody. Um, yeah, like any problems? Texas. With, like, um, did it affect our podcast at all? Did the, did the snow in Michigan and Texas and everywhere else? Did it affect, I don't know, anybody's browser issues? <sighs> The snow is not not uh, not conflicting with that with the podcast. However, we're going to talk about Rift Tracks eventually, guys. Yes, we will get there, but we <laughs> we have a little bit of ranting to do. Yeah, um, we do. We we use ZenCaster for our uh, recording purposes. Yeah, for two years now, we've been for two years we've been doing the True Blue Riftcast. We've just um, fired up. We Zencaster. started with Skype. Yeah, that, that was, was terrible. Trash. And then somebody, uh, one of the people that works at Rift Tracks actually mentioned uh, Zencaster, that that's what they use for their stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we started using it, and it, and it works good. Uh, uh, not so much part. anymore. Yeah, because now uh, you have to allow access to your camera because they do video recording, which we're not going to subject anybody to. Like, I went to go, well, number one, I went to go open it, and it's like, and I was like, what's going on? And it's like, you can't use this browser. And I was like, why not? Right. So I had to like go and find, I opened up Safari. Like, okay, let's put the thing in there. And it's like, Brr, you can't use that. And it's like, I can't use, I can't use the default browser on my Mac. He was, he was using Firefox. Firefox. Yeah. And now that doesn't work anymore. It doesn't because work anymore. Of the video so, I to go, I, so I had to go and download Google Chrome just to open the stupid thing. And um, so I open it and immediately I'm greeted with a picture of my face. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh my God, no, this is not happening. So I like turn, like turn camera off. It's like, you all do not get to see my disgusting fat face right now. Maybe in a couple no. of months <laughs> when I lose some weight, but not right now. Sorry. So I checked uh, Zedcaster's Twitter just to see if they had mentioned anything about it. And they did. Uh, the Twitter user tax owlbear 
tweeted them, <laughs> why are you ending support for Firefox, but you're supporting Brave, which has less than 1% of Firefox's market share. So on the, on the, uh, the choices that, that Dave was given, there was Chrome, there was Brave, which I'd never heard of, I've and heard of it. Microsoft Edge, which, come on, really, Edge? I'm, I've never even heard of that either. It's because, uh, well, that's Microsoft's new built-in thing because they killed Internet Explorer finally. Um, but I've never used Edge because, <laughs> why? Um, but they they tweeted out, we're open to adding Firefox in the future, uh, but right now the browser doesn't support the APIs that we need for high-definition video recording and backups of recordings. We're offering some alternative browsers for anyone concerned about privacy. So... If they, um, okay, look, you dumb Fs. We don't want to use that, okay? We don't no, want to use your stupid about video. video recording feature. So just turn it off. Yeah, we should just be able to choose if we want video or audio. And we just want audio because nobody wants to sit there and, and no, look no, at us hey, look, no one wants to look at us. That's not what this is. <laughs> that's, that's why you we stick do us a in podcast. Your, you, stick us in, you stick us in your earballs. And you listen to us rant about whatever. Yeah. And uh, so I tweeted out uh, under the True Blue Riffcast account, uh, at TB Riffcast, in case you want to go follow that. Uh, But I asked if anyone knows of a good free alternative to Zencaster. And then I went under my personal account, and I retweeted that, and they followed me. (laughs) And I went and I tweeted under my personal uh, uh, Twitter account, and this is what I put. I said, at Zencaster, your update totally sucks and made everything worse. Thanks for nothing. And uh, two people liked it. I think it was probably Jeremy both I times. I think it was probably just me, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, but the, the best part of this was uh, we found out where they're located. <laughs> oh, oh, shut up. Shut up. Just shut uh, up. I found out like on uh, like 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 on their Twitter it said to be like, oh hey, we're we're in Salt Lake City. And I was like, fuck you. You know <laughs> <laughs> Dave's oh. gonna drive to their headquarters and uh Yeah, because I got time to do that. <laughs> it's like, hey, turn off the video thing. But Bye. anyway, uh if anybody knows something out there, because uh we don't want to use this thing anymore. <laughs> Because the interface yeah. is really bad. It's it's hot garbage now. It used to be perfect. And yeah. now it's not. Now they changed everything. We're old men and I'm we don't like change. Anymore. No. No. <laughs> We're setting our ways, damn it. Be like we uh, we want to use the Google laughing emoji, even if it's not <laughs> cool, like all the young people say. <laughs> oh man. <sighs> Well, let's go on to finally talk about some riff tracks. Yes, let's talk about some riff tracks. (laughs) The year started out much like last year, where we started with a few riff tracks presents VODs, uh, which was kind of nice. We got uh, Earth Angel from Bridget and Mary Jo, and the year kicked off with uh, Invasion of the B-Girls, which we'll be talking about in just a few minutes. I do want to start with Earth Angel because uh, this one, while the movie itself... Was yeah, we was were just talking horrible. about old people. Yeah, um, I, and the casting is really interesting in this. Yeah, film. it is because it, it it does have well, technically, it it has at least two riff tracks alumnus in it. I was just looking for yeah. the right word. Uh, it has Eric Estrada from uh, last year's Light Blast, and it has Mark Hamill from you know. Uh, three of the good Star Warses and a couple of the bad ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, now and uh, there's also Cindy Williams and uh, uh, Alan Young, who you may know as Wilbur from Mister Ed. Oh, if you're blah, blah, older, blah, 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 like blah, 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 us, and blah, 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 according to our <laughs> according to our demographics, most people are around our age, so you'll probably get uh, who Alan Young is. I mean. I used to watch Mr. Ed on Nick at night. Yeah. Oh, same. Yeah. Younger, that, like, so. like, I think our universe, you know, like we're, we're the Oregon trail generation. Derp, 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 derp. <laughs> um, 
I like that better than Gen whatever. Gen Gen X. Oh, there's also uh, Roddy McDowell yes. and uh, Garrett Morris in this movie. He's uh, okay. Was he the principal? Uh, I think Roddy McDowell was. He was the uh, the guidance counselor. Okay, so so the, so Mr. Tatum. Okay, so Mr. Tatum and talk about the character himself. Was he the principal or was he the guidance counselor? Or the vice he principal was the guidance or counselor. something. Be like, hey, I th- hey. I think hey. he was the guidance counselor. Well, I suppose I I suppose we'll start talking about the movie now. So the, the, the movie yeah. opens and <sighs> it's like typical, like it's 1962. There's a there's a picture of President Kennedy on the wall. Mm-hmm. Like, because that's how you you know, whatever. And um, like, guess what? It's the past. Yeah, and, it's um, the fifties. There, uh, it, it's 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 nineteen sixty-two, and uh, it opens up uh. with a, a nerd with his back turned to the camera, and like all these cool kids are passing. Uh, these Bridget and Mary Jo properly point out this uh, this silent silent cheering crowd. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah go school yeah um <laughs> and uh so like they pull up at like uh, the nerds in their parking spot and like hey nerd what are you doing in our spot nerd and it turns around and it's mark hamill and i was like it's mark hamill and I was like okay wh- what is this and so like i i i i, I okay I, I i have to say i went to the internet and i found out when this movie was released and it was released in 1991. 1991. Okay, so the the main characters of this movie uh, are playing high school versions Hi- of themselves, right. and uh, the the there's a problem with that. Mark Hamill was 40 years old. He was 40? Eric Estrada. Yeah, he was 40 years old when they filmed this. Oh my god. Eric Estrada was uh, like 42. That can't possibly be true. He was born in 49. <laughs> yes, yes. Hold on. Cindy Williams was 44 when they filmed this movie. When was Mark Hamill born? Oh my god. And they were playing they were playing teenagers. Like there was no attempt to make them look younger. Not at all. There oh were, my there god, was I'm so just, embarrassed. <laughs> And because so they're forty year olds playing teenagers. Now I know there's there's like a trend in Hollywood where it's always like like actors in their mid to late twenties playing teenagers. Uh but yeah. Dude, you got forty year olds playing teenagers, you, you got a problem. Dude um Dude, I'm forty and I'm <laughs> so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed right now. For my fellow forty-year-olds <laughs> playing high school students, uh, and that wouldn't be so oh, okay. No, what am I saying? Of course, it's bad. Of course, it would be so bad. <laughs> but what makes it worse, I guess I should say, is that this is the nineteen ninety-one. So that would make this like what fourteen years after Mark Hamill de- debuted debuted as Luke <laughs> effing Skywalker. Yep. And this is what he's doing now. Did well, his like star, this... did his star f- really fall that badly? I don't get I, this. If, and I if was it did right this after this, right after this, it got, it got picked right it, back up because, Oh uh, yeah. Well, he became, then, he became like the, he became, the, Joker. The, he became the uh, biggest star in voice acting. I mean, that's what yeah. he does. Yeah, 1992, he started his turn as uh, the Joker. And uh, actually, the same year that this movie came out, uh, The Giver also came out, which Mark Ooh. Hamill was in. Um, and I would say is a far more entertaining movie. Not really a better movie, just a far more entertaining movie. So, okay, but, okay. So imagine, okay, but at, at this point, imagine you're, you're, oh my God. Imagine, I can't get over it. Imagine you are a 40 year old Mark Hamill. Playing a a high school nerd, fourteen years after you were Luke Skywalker, for the first time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this uh, was uh, let's see, eight eighty six was when Return of the Jedi came out. No, it was so. eighty three was when Return of the Jedi came out. Was it eighty three? It was eighty. I knew it was eighty something. Yeah, it was eighty something. 
So oh, it's like right. nine years, not nine, like eight years after you last played Luke Skywalker. Okay. Yeah. After you got your face messed up in, in, in a car accident, you've done Corvette summer. You've done all this. You're 40 years old. I'm a nerd. Imagine, uh, imagine you're Luke Skywalker now. Just be, you're, 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 you're Mark Hamill. And you're just like, I got to go be the Joker or, or, or something. So um, anyway, Let's get back to the story because yes. Yeah, so uh, he plays Wayne, yeah, and uh, Angela, who's our our main character in this movie, the cheerleader. Uh, she needs she needs some tutoring, yeah. so <laughs> she starts getting tutored from from Luke Skywalker. It's very a talking and, uh, cat. Yeah, and she's dating Ponch at this point, um, yeah. Eric Strata, yeah. uh, whose Ponch. name is the Duke in this. He's like the football star, or whatever, and. Uh, He's he's dating the cheerleader, and uh, Luke Skywalker is tutoring her. He's he's training her in the ways. And yeah, uh, she she came over and like, why does your house smell like waffles? He uh, he's teaching her history, and he's he's trying to put it to music. So oh, he no. makes up a song mm, about the it's D-Day so invasion. Bad. And he's because she can remember all the words to all the to cool songs. So if they put this to a song, then she can remember it. And she very and, correctly uh, states that that's not the same thing. Yeah. And, and then Mark Hamill goes through like these these. Ugh. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> this I I this movie is like an ice pick to my brain because. I had a teacher. We're, we're gonna personal moment. I had a teacher named <laughs> Mr. Faust. I can say his name because he's probably dead. <laughs> um, and uh, you remember when we were teenagers, Jamie? When Adam Sandler was like all the rage and like his comedy albums with the songs on it. And I yeah. remember in history class, we, were, we like we like had like you know like an open study session or something, and somebody was singing the song to. Um, the Hanukkah song or something. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mr. Faust, he's like sixty-eight years old. He's up there saying, "He'd be like, oh, well, I can't believe you guys know the words to all these other things, but you can't memorize the order of the Roman presidents or something." <laughs> right? I was just like, mm. oh, uh, so I, well, yeah. like, that's, like, so what that's basically mean? this. What are you talking about? <laughs> Oh, so that's basically what's going on here. Um, she takes her test. She does good. She goes back to Wayne's house, and he's wailing on the saxophone. He, yeah, he's, he's, he's Bill Clintoning it up real good. <laughs> uh, they start dancing. Uh, he kisses her. He asks her to the prom, and then Duke finds out and gets all mad and jumps in the car. And they're you're gonna go to the prom with me. I was Punch, <laughs> and I'm the, the star quarterback, and you're going with me. And they're fighting in the car, and it's a rainy and, night, and the road's slippery, and they crash, it, and she it, dies. They crash into a rock out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, what? And he he goes to the prom, yeah, anyway. He goes to the prom with, like, with, with, with like a bloody shirt, yeah. He's, like, all bloody. Like, they wanted to keep me at the hospital for to check for x-rays, but, but I'm decided, okay. But I decided to come to the prom and wreck everything. Yeah. And, but uh, she's dead. I'm like, she is? Dead. <laughs> like that wreck didn't look like it was going to hurt anybody. It and then was like, uh, it was like, okay, look that wreck. Okay. I think that wreck is this, 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 it, this, this wreck and earth angel is like, just like one step above the car wreck in replica. <laughs> I mean, and, and the fact yeah. that we actually got to see it. <laughs> I got and, I got serious vibes, serious replica vibes. From yeah. And then like immediately like, <laughs> I'm thinking about replica. Now. <laughs> have we talked about so, replica? Uh, like, have we uh, have, have, have have we covered it? I don't. I don't think so. That's uh, next episode. So. We, we talked about Birdemic Shack and Terror. Yeah, about it. next episode. At least I'm going to talk about replica. Okay. All right. We'll we'll do replica next next week. Okay. Um. So Angela dies, and then she shows up at the prom. But everything's white. All the balloons, all the decorations are just white. And nobody's there except for Roddy McDowell. Um, and he's like, wait a second. This can't be. You died 10 years before I did. Timey, wimey, wibbly, wobbly, Jeremy, bear me. So then uh, 
she finds out that she's you know has a mission and once she completes her mission she gets to go to her own personal heaven which is hanging out with james dean i thought it would be shopping but whatever so uh i think i think tommy was would probably enjoy this movie because they bring up james dean quite a bit yeah and he um, used to sell jeans <laughs> so we go to uh the future where Cindy Williams character Judith and her daughter Cindy Angela the Earth Angel has to uh, figure She's out a her ghost mission now and she finds Cindy in the junkyard uh looking at the old car that used to belong to the duke that was all restored thanks to uh, Garrett Morris okay all and, right uh, I have to interrupt you because uh, <laughs> I got a big problem with this car and them just <laughs> finding it at this junkyard <laughs> And then this, and then uh, the dude from Saturday Night Live just restoring it out of, just like magically restoring it. What? what? That doesn't happen. <laughs> Be like, I like that car up there on top of this hunk, hunking pile of garbage. Like, this is how we go shopping for cars. <laughs> It's like we need a forklift. Uh, like you're gonna need a lot more than that. And then yeah. suddenly it's like this beautifully restored classic car. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh Judith Judith and Cindy had just moved uh back to town to live with Judith's dad, uh Wilbur. And uh, <laughs> uh Cindy goes to school and she has the the meanest teacher there, they call him Dr. Flunkenstein. <laughs> and that's that's uh Luke Skywalker's character, Wayne Stein. And uh that's Cindy funny. has a crush on the on the the I don't know if he was the football captain or I know he was a wrestler too. I don't know if he if he was just a wrestler. I don't know. She had a crush on him. It and he was the same matter. kind of jerk as the Duke. Yeah, it doesn't matter. None of this matters. Uh it turns out her real mission is to get Judith and Wayne together because they're both miserable in their lives now. And Duke tries to rape Judith a couple <laughs> times. And like, it's really just dumb. It was just, and the ending is like, kind of, it's like, it just peters out too. It's not as bad as the ending for like light blast or something like that, where the movie just stops. But it's like, Cindy and Wayne go on a date to the prom because Wayne's like on the prom safety committee or whatever. And she leaves Duke in the dust and Cindy gets with the nerdy guy uh, who uh, was the guy from he was in three ninjas. <laughs> uh, and uh, and then Angela is seen dancing in the clouds with James Dean. The end. But she lo- okay. God damn it! She- <laughs> I'm so it's, it's so not satisfying. No, it's not. Like it doesn't feel like anything happened. Like there was a lot of stuff that went on in this movie, but it didn't feel like anything happened. No, it's like well, I mean, Bridget and Mary Jo are awesome. Oh yes, they. They have a great bit at the beginning uh, in the flashback in the 60s where there's some song playing and they're they're both say, saying to each other, oh, I bet this song really takes you back. <laughs> and they the do this whole, this whole bit where they're just like, uh, it's perfectly normal to feel to feel like this at your old age. And just remember, age is just a number. And they they keep doing it together, but saying it to each other, it was really good. It was yeah, it was I like that. I I, I, I quite enjoyed it. But there's it, a lot of good stuff in here. There's there's tons of good stuff, but just like as a movie, it's just like it <laughs> it, it it makes you feel hollow inside. Uh, the bad thing about this too is that it was longer than the last couple that we talked about. It was longer than Frozen Scream, and it was longer than Maximum. Yes, Rush. it was went really long. There's no reason this movie needed to be as long as it was. <laughs> It was a made for TV movie, so it had to to be at least an hour and a half so it could fill two hours with commercials. With commercials. And that's that's uh I would have loved to have commercial breaks in this movie because yeah. 
<laughs> it's so bad. 85 minutes. It's 85 minutes. Now we get to talk about uh, a completely different style of movie. Uh, is it, though? Uh, Invasion of the B-Girls, which, uh, yeah, this this was uh, Matthew J. Elliott and Ian Potter. And this I was the this first release of 2021. Yep. The riff of this movie is, uh, is there were so many is it's exceptional. Yeah. But like, there's one where they're talking about, uh, so that's a legitimate name when he's talking to the sheriff, who's the fat sheriff from hangar 18, which they bring up multiple times. Mm -hmm. Um, but they, <laughs> he's like, now if his name was, was John bastard, that'd be an <laughs> illegitimate name. And, Oh my gosh, I laughed so hard at that. But I was that, like, uh, and this is just like a little bit of, I don't know if it's vanity on my part a little bit, but I was just kind of like worried a little tiny bit. And I'll, 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 I'll tell you why is because this movie is called the invasion of the, of, of the B girls. And as many of you know, out there, uh, you true blue riff tracks listeners. I used to wrestle locally. It was a professional wrestler <laughs> Under the under the ring name Charlie B, and Ooh. yeah, Buzz Buzz MFers, <laughs> and um, I was slightly worried. I I didn't think that they would reference me directly. I don't think that's ever in the cards. But I uh, there has been there was one indirect sort of reference to something that was going on with me uh, in Hangar. Th Hangar 18, uh, in that um, not a lot of people are aware that James Wynn tried to get <laughs> crowdfunding for Birdemic 3 and got like $60. And I was elated to find out this news because it was around that time when me and James Wynn didn't really like each other for a variety of reasons. <laughs> and I was all over social media saying like, ha, look at this jerk, right? And uh, but it wasn't really that big a news. And then uh, I heard Ian Potter on uh, uh, in Hangar 18 saying, "Ah, Birdemic Cam. I wonder how funding for that sequel is going." And I almost choked to death when I heard that. <laughs> so it's just like it's not even. It, it, it's like two or three steps removed from me. But that's just like the first time, even like anything that close to me got got referenced in in riff tracks so yeah. it's 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 a stretch i admit <laughs> but like it but, still counts yeah it still counts but uh i was just like uh, i was like oh no it's just like because i know both matthew and ian are aware that i wrestle professionally as a b-man you know in in, in a comedy <laughs> sense <laughs> so i was like what if they make some kind of like super like subtle reference to Charlie B? Like part of me is like, that'd be so awesome. And the other part of me would be like, oh, please, God, don't. <laughs> because, but uh, um, that would be that would be awesome and embarrassing. At the same yeah, time. it would it would it would be. But um, it didn't happen. So that's a good thing. <laughs> But anyway, I did love this riff though. It was yeah. it was outstanding. Uh should we talk about the movie? <laughs> yeah, before before we start talking about the actual movie, I would like to uh mention the writer of this film and some of oh, the other yeah, <laughs> movies that that he wrote because he wrote some really good movies. He he wrote at no, wait, he's written two, at least two Rift Tracks movies. Yeah. So uh, uh, I believe the uh, screenwriter you were referring to uh, is uh, the one and only Nicholas Meyer. Yes, indeed. Author of the Seven Percent Solution uh, and uh, renowned um, screenwriter of many, many good things, including um, Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan and Star yep. Trek VI: The Undiscovered Country, both of yeah, which have he, been covered by Rift Tracks. And he also wrote Star Trek for the Voyage Home. All of the even numbered good Star Trek movies he mm -hmm. wrote. Uh, and then he also wrote some other things like Invasion of the B Girls. Invasion of the B Girls. Well, now here, here's the thing. This was actually his first screenplay. 
Well, he said he this tried to disown group. it, but yeah, but like the director or whoever it was, like, like there's some story. Google it. I don't feel like looking it up, but um, the uh, the director or whoever it was like convinced him to keep his name on it. Yeah, he he was gonna get his name off of the credits, and they're like, no, 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 you should you should keep it. It'll you're gonna help want your career. Well, I, yeah, you're gonna want probably, the credit. It probably didn't hurt, <laughs> but like I can see why he wanted his name off it. Yeah, yeah, this was uh, this was this was a film. This was something that was written and and uh, recorded with video cameras and put to film and edited and to a movie. Uh, I will say. I will say uh, there is some pretty good style to some of some of this movie. Some of this movie. <clears throat> some of this movie has some of the worst camera work I've ever seen until James Gwen came along. But like the style of this movie, just I'm, I'm just talking like 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 the aesthetics. The, yeah, the, the, like, yeah, like 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 the, like the people who the people who love this movie. Are 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 the people who believe that the seventies were the butt ugliest decade <laughs> out there? Because this proves them completely one hundred percent justified and correct. <laughs> if like like I don't know, man. I saw uh, what was it? I can't remember. It, it doesn't matter. I saw another movie where th- it was just like. Wow, the seventies were, were 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 horrific, but this movie makes it look just like slightly prettier. Also, boobs. Yeah, and they make a good joke about that with uh, with the first the first nudity scene. In yeah, here. that's the one I want to talk about about briefly because I I think because it, it really like, just comes out of nowhere for one thing. Yeah, it's just like bam, this girl with uh, okay, look, I'm <laughs> I'm not trying to sound shallow or like but this girl with gigantic tits okay with uh, suddenly topless and she goes and she she just appears on screen and <laughs> with a naked guy yeah and like and then just like st- starts making out and starts rolling down the hill in the world's most in the weirdest <laughs> possible way i'm like are they yeah. having sex like it's like it, i i don't know what was supposed to be happening there like i i think that they were trying to like show them being passionate in a way where they don't show their genitals to the camera as this scene is happening and and the the boobs are there uh they they make the joke about ah 70s boobs and how oh, you'd rather not see boobs? And he's like, yes, I would rather. It's better to not see boobs than to see 70s boobs. Well, I mean, uh, guess what? There's more of it. Like if, there's way too much more of it. Yeah. Because like, like if I had to describe this movie, it would be like 70s boobs and dead bodies. Yeah. Like, and and how do they die? They they snoo snoo death by snoo snoo. Yeah. So it, like yeah. Right, like that's how all like like all these corpses look like 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 they have this like <laughs> number one they're like discolored, right, and they have like this look on their face of just like utter terror and shock that like oh my god a woman is having sex with me this is horrible. Um, well, they're all like adulterers too. They're all married, and they're they're sleeping with these bee girls. And dying from it, so I think that's the main takeaway from this this movie is don't, don't have don't, is, don't don't have sex outside is, of marriage. Don't or commit you adultery, die. or yes, or you're gonna. Like, <laughs> I keep going back to this scene, like 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 <laughs> like 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 for me that defines the movie the 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 rolling down the hill, the scene. Yeah, because it's just like well, I mean that's I I, I feel like that's this movie like encapsulated. Because it's completely like if it was supposed to be like like sensual or titillating or arousing, guess what? It I've just would... lost interest in sex for the rest of my entire <laughs> life. If that's it. like 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 if that's it, then just like count me out. Yeah. Right? It was horrible. It was horrible. 
Uh, Any other favorite moments? You know, I don't really have any favorite <laughs> moments from this. Because so much of the movie I'm watching, I'm just like, ew. Yeah, it's just like ew. It's, I don't want to. I don't want to be seeing this right, right now. Yeah, ew. ew. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Hey, hey, that's that. That's the title of the episode. If we didn't have one already, ew. <laughs> oh man, it's the the movie's gross. Like, and I don't say that like violence and gore wise. I just mean it's just I feel icky watching it. No, you feel like know. a pervert I, watching it. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree. There were some scenes where uh, <laughs> Matthew and Ian were just like, while they're while this other stuff, the sex is going on, uh, they're just like, oh, look at those curtains in the background. Yeah, it doesn't really match this, and I can't believe they don't have carpeting on that floor, <laughs> and just you know all that kind of like anything they can to to draw attention everywhere but the action of the scene. Yeah, and uh, I appreciated that. Yeah. To the women in this movie, you know what I would say? Wear a bra. Well, there's a scene. Okay. They show them, like, turning one of the women in the movie uh, into one of the B-girls. one of the B-girls. And they, like, give her an injection to calm her down or whatever. They stick her in this this weird little, like, igloo-type structure. And she's naked. And they start, like, covering her in this white goo. And <laughs> do you then, hear yourself? Do you, I just yeah. watch. I just, <laughs> and then, and then she gets covered. Jeremy in Jeremy said that everybody. And then she, they like peel the white goo off of her, <laughs> and she's transformed into this this B girl. And then they all start feeling themselves up, and I'm just like, what is the point of this? Why? And and I and one of the guys made the comment that uh, the point the was movie was written goo. by a twelve year old. Yes. And that that was the pitch, and they're like, "Yes, we'll we'll let you make your uh, women feeling their own boobs movie, but just know at some point there's gonna have to be a story." <laughs> was there a story? Because I couldn't detect one. Uh, there, there wasn't until the very end. Like after they they kill all the B girls, then there's exposition as to what they were doing, <laughs> and then that's the end of the movie. Like. It was terrible. Such a terrible movie, but for way different reasons than Earth Angel. So, Jeremy, would you watch this movie unriffed? No. Would you watch this movie unriffed, Dave? I don't think so. Would you watch so. Earth Angel unriffed? I might have out of curiosity before I they released the riff tracks, but no. Hmm. Now I don't have to, so no. What the hell? What is that? Uh, what? What is what? I don't know. There's something happening. I'm getting some kind of. Uh, this is so weird. Can you hear that? No, I can't. Mr. Canino might be. I'm getting in my ears. Something's going on. What? What the hell? <laughs> Were you listening to like another conversation or something? Is Matthew J. Elliott here? Hello? Yes, I'm here. I don't mm-hmm. think Hello? so. Hello? Dude, look Anybody at the there? dude look, look at the Zencaster Hello? screen. I see I anybody? see Hello? me I'm, and you. Yeah, I'm here. I, is anybody Hello? I see Matthew J. Here, look. I sort of feel I'm like I'm trying to break through a, the hex here. Wonder uh, who is doing uh, this to you? And with one episode I to go, Matthew is there any way you're gonna be able to wrap up all these storylines effectively? Because I have concerns. Hello? Hello? Okay, so it seems like we're having a few problems here, so why don't we take a break and we'll all be back next time with the next True Blue Riffcast. Riffcast.